These two devices, the QuirkLogic Paper, the Books Max Lumi. These are the 13.3 or A4 sized e-readers and they take notes. Today I'm going to be comparing them because if you're an academic person, you have to read documents that are formatted for A4. I honestly think you want a e-reader of this size. If you have to take notes on it, these are really the choice that you have. I think that these are incredibly powerful tools for professionals and every professional is gonna want one of these. And if I had the choice, I would definitely go with an A4 size e-ink tablet. Some of the benefits that they both have are things like split screen mode. The most important thing is having all of that space for your notes and for your reading. In this video, I'm just gonna compare the Books Max Lumi and the Quirk Logic Paper. They're excellent devices and I recommend both of them. I'm gonna compare them in all these categories. You'll know which category is most important for you and stick around to the end of the video. So we've got an interesting way to think about the difference between these two devices. Firstly, to say that neither of these have reliable handwriting. The books device does at least have it on the device. It's just not as reliable as some of the competitors. There is a workaround for the Quirk Logic paper. You can upload it to Google Drive. Then from there, you can use Google Drive's handwriting convert should you wish. If your needs are purely for writing, then this perhaps isn't the format for you. And if your needs are purely for writing, then perhaps you don't really need the full A4 size in any case. For me, for handwriting recognition, I'm looking for the ability to do it offline and to do it reliably. Neither of these get that. To use e-ink tablets for writing, which many of them are very good at, I'm looking for something that I can write line by line because it is true that when you write with a pen, you write from your heart. However, the interest in handwriting recognition for these is not as important as a lot of reviewers and a lot of customers maybe think it might be because in fact, time yourself, I'll bet that you can type just as fast as you can write with a pen. And especially if you have to write kind of slowly and accurately for it to be read by the computer, then that will just slow you down. However, if you are a writer and you're used to typing, then the Books Max Lumi will actually let you connect a Bluetooth keyboard. So that's quite a cool use of an e-ink tablet. So for this category, I am going to give it to the Books Max Lumi because it actually has those features that you might expect if you're a writer. That being said, the Quirk Logic paper does have a very nice feel and the stylus is quite good. It has an erase and a highlight button on it. However, it is a battery powered stylus. I don't know if you notice sometimes, it just skips a beat <laughs> and that can be a bit frustrating. However, what I will say about the different styluses is that it's more important getting used to whatever you've got rather than the actual feel of the individual styluses. Don't be put off by the Quirk Logic paper stylus. It's totally fine. I really think though it is time for Quirk Logic to upgrade to the latest Sony hardware because then it would just be using the same Wacom enabled styluses as everything else and you could pick and choose which stylus you wanted to use and that would make it a much more pleasurable experience. It's reading next. The reading category, Books has to take it because of all the different apps that you can choose from. I mean, you can literally choose from any Android e-reading app and Books themselves have actually gone ahead and optimize the whole bunch of reading apps. This is really primarily an e-reader, but it's one which is made much more powerful by the sheer size and by the notation features. The paper only really deals with PDFs, and even with the PDFs, you do in fact have to convert them to the QLW file format, which is the Quirk Logic Notebook file format. It's fine as a reader if all you want to read is PDF. You can annotate them all on the device and you can import them on the device via the Google Drive integration that it has. I quite like the simplicity of the platform. It does have a browser but that isn't really stable and what would be really good is if you could go through the browser and actually download PDFs onto here. But at the minute you need the PDF to essentially be in your Google Drive or to upload it via the web app. But the Quirk Logic web app is very good as well. So the books can handle the, all the different file formats, it can handle all the different apps and really with it you can read in whichever way you choose. Books are primarily an e-reader company. Quirk Logic, really it's all about that collaboration rather than that professional learning. So the books is going to get this category. Next is art. This is an absolute non-starter for the Quirk Logic paper because the Quirk Logic paper does not have pressure levels. It also is not the world's most accurate stylus. If I do a line across, you might be able to see some micro jitter in there and any kind of tilting leaves the pen reasonably inaccurate. 
the book's tools for art are pretty good. And actually the pen and the pencil modes allow you to draw in some quite creative ways. It's not the best that there is for art. It doesn't come close to Remarkable's tools, for instance, and they don't use tilt on the styluses, which is a bit of a miss for me. But certainly out of these two, if you're interested in drawing, then you're gonna go for the books Max Lumi. It's not looking great so far for the paper. So for work, it's a bit of a tie uh, with a but. If you could convince your whole organization to invest in the Quirk Logic system, then I think the Quirk Logic would win. If you, for instance, could have the Quirk Logic Quiller in your boardroom and everybody could be armed with a Quirk Logic paper, it would be a fantastic way to collaborate and work together. It really is about the development of ideas in collaboration with other people. And I would say that I believe in what Quirk Logic is trying to do. That would not be cheap to do that. <laughs> and as an individual buying the ink tablet, you want to know that it's gonna be able to integrate in the current way that your work works. You could, in meetings, collaborate on one document together that's displayed on the quiller that you're all annotating on your own individual paper devices. It really is an incredible way to collaborate around ideas, notes, presentations and plans in real time. And you can put that all on a secure server that you control. So it's a really strong choice and there are reasons why companies that need to keep their data secure are going with Quirk Logic as a company. But as an individual that's looking to buy this to integrate in the way that your company already operates, then the Books Max Lumi is going to do it far more easily and you can download any Android app that you please and so you can probably integrate with the workflows that already exist. Next is presenting. Essentially, the choice is screen share or web app. So the screen share mode on the books devices just work by simply tapping screen share and you can cast to mirror cast enabled devices straight away. So it will cast, for instance, to my smart TV in the living room or indeed you can cast by any screen sharing app that you desire. So in my classroom, we use a brand called Promethean Whiteboards and I can download their app onto here and I can cast through that app to the whiteboard in the classroom. It does work well, it isn't seamless, it isn't perfect. For instance, with that app, you can't use it in landscape mode, so you can't cover the whole screen. I don't know why there isn't an option to cast straight out by either the HDMI port that they've got in the bottom or the USB-C. That would be ideal, really, for one of these tablets to be able to just connect straight into a HDMI output. But with that, you can actually show websites in color and maybe you could even play a video and it would play on the screen that you were displaying on in full color in real time and it would look absolutely fine. You could also use the PowerPoint app on here if you wish to present. So there are lots of options here, but I would suggest you're gonna spend quite a lot of time tinkering to make it work for you with your specific setup. The Quirk Logic Paper, however, just streams a live copy to its web app. So any changes that you make in the QLW files are actually changed instantaneously on the web app as long as you're connected to the internet. And so you can show the web app full screen in your classroom or full screen in your boardroom that they can be looking at that document. Other people can collaborate on that document at the same time. And actually your whole audience could have on whichever device they were using, as long as it can connect to the internet essentially, they could have that same document loaded up and be seeing your changes in front of them. So that can be very powerful. They can move around different parts of the kind of infinite scroll document that you're working on. That can be a very powerful and engaging way to present. Personally, I really like using the split screen mode. So I have my lesson notes on one side and I have the document that I'm sharing to the screen on the other side. And again, because I can move around a different view on the Quirk Logic paper to what is being shown on the screen, I can annotate on parts that are being shown much larger on the screen or much smaller. I can zoom in on sections on this that I want to work on, which are maybe only shown on part of the screen here. There are just many more options and I really quite like the way of working with that web app. It does mean, however, that you need to connect a computer to the screen or you need the screen to be able to connect to Quirk Logic's web app. There are a few kind of technical issues that you're going to be working with. You could invest in that Quirk Logic quiller and have that as being your main presentation screen. Books does allow you to do a split screen, but you don't have an option to only share one side of the screen, which would be quite useful if you wanted to have notes that only you could see on one side of the screen and the other side that you were sharing to your audience. So I'm going to give presenting to the Quirk Logic paper because certainly the aim of this device is for it to be really useful for 
for teachers and educators and presenting in boardroom scenarios. Lastly, design accidental button presses there. Cause that one to. I actually really like the thin plastic construction of the paper and you could very easily, it is robust enough, use it without a cover on it at all. And then it's this incredibly lightweight design. It's like having a magazine in your bag. <laughs> it's that light. The Books is the kind of design of tablets of a few years ago. It's not an innovative design. And probably the Max Lumi is, is ready for a refresh in terms of its design language. And I'm sure they'll do this because they're moving towards this kind of air lines in all of their devices. They've got a Nova Air and a Note Air, which are the two other sizes of note-taking e-readers. The screen feel is good and the pen, I like having the two buttons, and you do get choices of either a kind of graphite nib or a POM nib. So depending on whether you like a scratchy pencil feel or a more pen-like feel, you can choose those. So for me, for the sheer lightweight, for the thinness, and for the kind of plasticky feel, I prefer the design of the Quirk Logic paper. We've got four points to three. The Books Max Lumi coming out on top. I don't know, I don't know whether comparing them in this way really does it justice. It kind of makes it seem like there's a bigger gap between these two devices than there really is. I have really enjoyed using the Quirk Logic paper and I've enjoyed using the Books Max Lumi too. The point of these reviews is not really to talk about their features, but to talk about what it's actually like using them as a professional in daily use. So I'm gonna try something slightly different. I'm gonna try and compare them in these categories here which I like the actions that a professional would need to do on a daily basis. Professionals need to think and they need to decide. For me, it's a tie on this one because both of them allow you that freedom to think. If you need more quick access to different files and apps to do that decision-making process, then you're gonna go with the books. If you prefer a kind of more solitary, distraction-free environment to make those decisions, then go with the paper. Professionals need to communicate. They need to be able to communicate with their team. And currently the books is the only one that will let you do things like email or access Microsoft Teams or any kind of chat app that you might want to use with your team. So I have to give this one to the books. However, that being said, I've discussed at length in this video the kind of use of the Quirk Logic paper in the boardroom environment. And I think that is a powerful use. Professionals need to be able to collaborate. And having a environment which you can collaborate in real time as the main focus of this device is a really compelling argument. You can, on the books devices, have more than one device signed into the account. So you could theoretically collaborate on the notepads and things like that, but it isn't set up to do that. That's not its main aim. It's more of an individual device than the Quirk Logic paper. So for the collaboration with that whole live collaboration idea, I'm gonna give it to the Quirk Logic paper. Professionals need to be able to read and they need to be able to learn. They need to be able to contribute to the domain that they work in. For me, that is going to work best on the books device because you have access to all those different reading apps. Reading for this device is a very strong category. For me, for reading, it's probably between books or the Kobo devices that are coming out now as the strongest of the ink tablets. So planning and organizing, well, I'm actually going to give this one to the Quirk Logic paper because if you just simply want to use this as a planner, then you have it as a kind of focused use. But with the books devices, I often find myself thinking, well, what else can it do? And I use it in a less focused way, therefore, because I'm always thinking about what other apps could I be using on it, rather than just sticking with the note-taking capability and using it like a planner. Using these as a productivity tool is a really useful thing. And being well-planned and organized is the key for a professional to being productive. Lastly, innovative and creative tasks. Professionals need to be able to innovate, and create. I've already said that I wouldn't use the Quirk Logic paper for drawing. So this does kind of depend on what type of creative person you are. If you're an artist, then the Quirk Logic paper is not going to be a creative tool for you. The books could be. If you're a writer, then, well, I wouldn't firstly recommend either of these for you. I'd go with something like the Supernote or the Kobo because the handwriting recognitions are so well integrated into those tablets. But if you're a writer, I'd, out of these two, stick with the book. For leadership, for kind of boardroom and management tasks, that kind of creativity, I would probably give it to the Quirk Logic paper. So we have a tie on this one. For me, it's not about telling you which one of these is better. On paper, objectively, the Books Max Lumi is better. The Quirk Logic is using technology which is quite old now. It's the 
older Sony system. And I do think the Quirk Logic Paper, to be compelling in 2022, they need to upgrade to the latest Sony hardware. But the system that Quirk Logic are making and updating and innovating with, it isn't like any other tablet. It isn't just trying to give you everything that an Android tablet can do with an e-ink screen on. And that is worth celebrating and supporting because it does have the capacity to improve as time goes on. It is already a useful machine, don't get me wrong, but I do think that the team at Quirk Logic are developing this device with aims far beyond what it can do right now. Let me know what you think about the two different ways of comparing these e-ink tablets. I'm trying my best to give you my opinions after using these for work. I have used these for several months each actually as my main tablet at work and so I build these opinions on actually using them in the real world for work. I hope that somewhere in this video going through all those different categories there's been something that's helped you to decide which one of these two is going to suit you and your professional life. Best. Thanks for watching.